Airstrikes in Syria, apparently fired from Israel, are threatening to draw the United States into a Mideast conflict. Two attacks in two days reported targeting Iranian-made missiles and a military research facility. One Syrian official called the attacks a declaration of war. One Syrian official called the attacks a declaration of war. Now Israel is beefing up its defenses against the retaliation, or threat of it anyway, from Syria and Iran. The question now, will the U.S. be pressured to act? Plus, the new assessment out of Israel that Syria's Bashar Assad is using chemical weapons against his own people. How this could trigger a U.S. intervention in that long conflict. We have been very clear to the Assad regime, but also to other players on the ground, that a red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. The use of chemical weapons is and would be totally unacceptable. And if you make the tragic mistake of using these weapons, there will be consequences and you will be held accountable. The President of the United States said that if the Bashar Assad used chemical weapons, it would be a game changer, that it would cross a red line. I think it's pretty obvious that red line has been crossed. Now I hope the administration will consider what we have been recommending now for over two years of this bloodletting and massacre, and that is to provide a safe area for the opposition to operate, to uh, establish a no-fly zone, and provide weapons to the people in the resistance who we trust. The jihadists are on the ascendancy. There is chemical weapons being used. The massacres continue. The Russians continue to be assisting uh, Bashar Assad. The Russians continue to be assisting uh, Bashar Assad. are all in uh, and the Iranians are all in the Russians continue to be assisting uh, Bashar Assad uh, and the Iranians are all in not an error and it is definitely not an accident. China continues to deliberately provoke India by a series of well-planned incursions by land, air and sea. After concealing the facts of the incursion for seven straight days, India has finally stepped up diplomatic pressure on Beijing. But there is no end to China's defiance. Two flag meetings have failed within a matter of 96 hours and China just refuses to back down. So what's stopping us from toughening our stand?
Investigators in Northern California are hoping the survivors of a deadly limousine accident will help them learn what went wrong. The limo was taking a newlywed bride and her friends for a night of celebrating when it burst into flames. Investigators in Northern California are hoping the survivors of a deadly limousine accident will help them learn what went wrong. The limo was taking a newlywed bride and her friends for a night of celebrating when it burst into flames. Five women, including the new bride, died. Three others were pulled to safety by passing motorists. One woman managed to escape on her own. ABC 7 News reporter Lisa Amin Galizian has just arrived at the San Mateo Bridge Toll Plaza. The San Mateo Bridge Toll Plaza. Where traffic has been stopped. And Lisa, what are you seeing? Um, you know, we actually cannot even get to the toll plaza. We are here at the Clawwater Road exit, which is on 92 westbound. Take a look behind me. You can see that traffic is crawling through. It's because only one lane of traffic is open. The CHP shut down westbound traffic because several miles away on the San Mateo Bridge itself at the decline is that limo that caught fire. People inside, all of them, all ten, are women. The people inside, all of them, all ten, are women. The people inside, all of them, all ten, are women and they're believed to be in their 30s. We are on the San Mateo County side of the San Mateo Bridge and the limousine fire happened on the westbound lanes on the decline section of the San Mateo Bridge. The CHP says smoke started coming out of the rear of the limousine. The driver then pulled over and then the vehicle was quickly engulfed in flames. Five of the passengers were able to escape. Five others did not survive. Five of the passengers were able to escape. Five others did not survive. Two were transported to Stanford Hospital. Two others were transported to Valley Medical. Of the five people who did not survive, we've been told that people are working on extricating their bodies right now. Live in San Mateo, Lillian Kim, ABC 7 News.